Good day booktube, Will here. Uh, been quite some time since I've done a video, I've just not been feeling up to it, feeling the inclination, uh, particularly wanting to. So I figured uh, I've got a little bit of free time here this afternoon so I thought I'd do a book haul update. Uh, the, obviously I'm slow on the mark here because this is stuff from Christmas, uh, three of which are mine, one of which is my wife's which I got her. Uh, but yeah we'll just talk through them and just see what we've got. So we'll start front to back is how we'll go. So the uh, first one I got was Sylvia Townsend Warner. I'm doing this as a buddy read uh, later on this year. And um, I came across it from Backlisted Podcast. And I wonder, because this is the Penguin Clothbound Classics. Is that what they're called? But I don't think they come with much of a blurb. Or anything along those lines as to no, it's just straight into the story in the front, um, and then that's the rest of it, yeah. So basically, I, I get the gist this is about a young witch, uh, and that's really all I know. So it's very much of a pun, but I'm, I'm very glad to have it. It's a very, I do like the cloth band classics. The only problem is if it's something, um, I never I think I mentioned before, I read several. Several hundred, I think it was like 600 pages or something of Les Mis. Uh, that's a black edition with birds on it, I think. But the actual bird patterning, it wears off rather easily. Like, I don't know if you can see here, it's like, I don't know if that's deliberate dappling effect or if that's just friction. But yeah, so uh, I'll be reading this. This was brought in, you know, it's the year of reading one's own. I had a, a commitment to get this, so... I got it as a Christmas present, thankfully, so that ticked the box of me having to purchase it myself, which is somewhat of a loophole for the year of reading one's own. So, uh, or the read what your own challenge, sorry, I keep getting the two. They're interchangeable as far as I'm concerned, uh, framing-wise. So yeah, so read what your own challenge, skirted around the edges. So that is our book one, Lolly Willows by Sylvia Townsend Warner. Uh, second one I got was uh, Lud in the Mist by Hope Merlees. Um... I had a bit of a glance at a lot of the reviews like this, and a lot of the reviews seem to mainly bang on about the fact that Neil Gaiman rates this book. Uh, so far, I think I'm about a quarter of the way through. It's 200 and... on page 70... of whatever it is, 270-ish or something like that. That's how he's done. Yeah, 260, so yeah, about a quarter of the way through. And so far, it's a bit of a slow burn to get going, but it, now the story is going. Uh, sorry, as you can see, the pages are warped because yesterday a child spilled a cup of tea all over it, so there is discoloration all over it now from tea staining. So I managed to get it on the radiator before it got any wetter and got it dried out a bit, but now it's gone all wibbly. But yeah, this uh, my wife got me this. She saw a uh, TikTok, book talk, whatever you call it. I don't go on TikTok, so I have no idea. But uh, she saw something about it on there where it was highly recommended. Uh, obviously, has the does have the endorsement of Neil Gaiman, which I suppose goes away. But uh, yeah, uh, Hope Merley's. Uh, I think she only wrote three books, some poetry, and then the rest was non-fiction. But uh, was a member of the Bloomsbury Group, I think. It's a Bloomsbury Group. I think Virginia, Virginia Woolf, there's something I read about where Virginia Woolf herself called Hope Merley's prickly. And I think in a little literary society of people who are kind of prickly anyway. Whoa, there we go. That was inevitable, wasn't it? What would it, what would the world be like without stuff falling over onto me? Anyway, uh, so yeah, I'm currently reading this. Um, and so far, it's really good. Uh, it is, just to read the back. So, Lud in the Mist is a prosperous country town situated where two rivers meet, the Dahl and the Dapple. The Dapple springs from the land of Fairy and is a great trial to Lud, which rejects anything other, preferring to believe only in what is known, what is solid. Nathaniel Chanticleer, a dreamy, melancholy man, is deliberately ignoring a vital part of his own past, a secret he refuses even to acknowledge. But with the disappearance of his daughter and a long overdue desire to protect his son, he realises Lud is changing, and something must be done. So, like I say, so still in the first quarter, so still in like a formative part of the story. But yeah, it's a, uh, it's definitely building. The story is building and actually going somewhere now. There was a lot of that uh, world building and scene setting at the beginning, and then there a couple of 
the writing style is a little bit jarring at times. And there are a couple of elements where I think there are some descriptive words that I think maybe your hands are tied as an author. But for example, completely fictitious world. But they mentioned the China tea set in it. Which just mm, baffled me. It kind of uses our world, real world name for things. And then we'll also describe things in descriptive terms as to, what was the term? Something looking Dutch. But as far as I know, this is completely in its own world. It's not a, it's not a, part, it's not a made up part of Earth. I don't think. At least that's not referred to. But yeah, the fact that something was referred to as being Dutch. A China tea set. I get why. That is what a China tea set is its own thing. But you wouldn't have a, you could just say, I suppose, mm, tricky. Tricky if you want to be descriptive. And paint the right picture, but then respect the fact that you're world building. It's like a what would be the equivalent? Is it Sam calling Strider Longshanks in Fellowship of the Ring? Is that the one? But it seems it seems unusual. It seems out of place. I don't know. I might be talking nonsense. But anyway, I'm still really enjoying it, and we are getting through it bit by bit. So that will be book number two I've completed for the Read What Your Own Challenge. A year of reading one's own. So I'm not after the flying start as others, and I don't think I will, but I'm just, I am just taking my sweet time, enjoying a precious year of reading. Next up is a book that I got for my wife, uh, which I saw. Uh, oof, that's falling over again. Sorry, everything's falling over. Again. So my daughter has a children's version of the complete Jane Austen. So obviously very, very abridged, very simplified, but she's really enjoying them. And the book she was going to move on to next was Persuasion, and then we don't uh, own a real version of Persuasion. So I was looking for a copy of that because my wife wanted to do basically like a buddy read with my daughter. And I was looking around, and there are usual ones and this, that and the other, and I just thought, you know what, I want to get something, it's a Christmas present, so I want to get something a bit more, something with a bit more oomph to it. And I came across these, and it's just... Wait, if I can find one. Where is one? They are just delightful. So every now and then... Where can I find it properly? I haven't done this yet to take it apart. But there are... I say real. Where would it be? Ah, there's a good one. There are, within certain little wallets throughout, created... Oh, I don't want to take it out too far. There are inserts to further embellish the story of things the characters will be reading or doing I'm just trying to find ah there's a good, there's a good example so in this one there is a formal letter charles smith esquire so everything's recreated to within a good degree of recreation for the time uh, to be a so you can feel that, and I've, I just fell in love with the idea. My wife really enjoyed uh, receiving it and was thrilled by the idea of it. And I just think it's just... So, as it says, featuring the characters' letters and papers written and folded by hand. And this is just an experience, an immersive experience within books. Should be done way more often, especially with period pieces, like the works of Jane Austen or Dickens or whatever it might be. This should be... A, like, it would be fantastic. Even if it's... Even if it's a... Uh, Maybe even with some artistic license, if, for example, in Bleak House, is it Chandis and Chandis or whatever the ongoing battle is? Imagine if you're going through that and every now and then there's some, co some court papers that mirror real court papers from the time, but have been Dickensified, Dickensianified, or whatever it would be. I think there's just certain stuff that would just lift the overall experience of reading it. And obviously Barbara Hell here. So I think the other one she's done is uh, Little Women, and I think it might be Pride and Prejudice. Are the other ones that are in that are in this? So this is published by. Ooh, don't want to fall over. Uh, what is the name of it? Chronicle Books. And is it curated by Barbara Heller? And yeah, it's just it's just really nice, really unique. Love it. Absolutely love it. I wish more things were that in depth. And then, just as a smaller token, so back to 
one of my other favourite pastimes, which is comic novels and graphic novels. We have Book 2, Original Sins, from Gideon Falls, from Jeff Lamar, Andrea Sorrentino, and Dave Stewart. And this has a very interesting art style. It's very simple, very... Um, I don't know, from moments... I don't know how to describe I don't know, there's probably a term for it. I should probably just look into what the term is, but... Um, yeah, there's... Where is it? There's out there. So it's this rough edges, quick sketch style, but also as if it was a rough edges and quick scratch, quick sketch, scratch style of rotoscoping of like just straight from the actual thing itself. And obviously there's a lot of sinisterness, but yeah. Uh, it's been adapted for TV, which would be really good, so I'm looking forward to that. Um, but yeah, so I haven't read that one yet, so I'll read that at some point. I need to reread the first volume actually, just to refresh myself. But to recap, we have Gideon Falls, Book 2, Original Sins. The ooh, Chronicle Books, Persuasion, curated by Barbara Heller. Uh, sorry, Persuasion by Jane Austen, curated by Barbara Heller. We have Hope Merley's Blood in the Mist, which is a fantasy. And finally, we have Sylvia Townsend Warner, Lolly Willows. And that is the book haul from Christmas. Uh, thank you very much, BookTube.